When discussing the future, we often speculate on ideas like flying cars, quantum technology, and interstellar travel. But of all the possibilities that lie in our future, one of the few things we are certain of is that we will still consume food in one way or the other. Our current food technology is global, diverse, and rapidly advancing. An example of this being the emerging acceptance of plant-based meat by the public. These are slabs of protein made from ingredients which are derived from plants and designed specifically to have the taste, texture, color, and aroma we recognize from regular animal-based meat. And just to further validate their popularity, a research firm recently showed data which suggested that growth in sales of plant-based meat burgers had increased by 10% while normal beef burgers had basically stagnated this year. This is only the beginning of the evolution of our edible future, as the technology said to be implemented will change just about everything that has to do with our food, from what we eat to even how the food is consumed. Now before we continue, I'd like you all to know I post new videos every week on Sundays, so please leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more interesting content. Just as I said earlier, Every facet of food technology is set to evolve drastically in the coming years and we'll discuss a few ways this change could appear, starting with what we eat. The food of the future is likely to be very similar and yet drastically different from what we see today. Just like my example with plant-based meats, we will likely see other forms of lab-grown or processed food. One reason why this will happen is because demand for meat is projected to rise dramatically in the next 30 years. This alone will create a strong market for alternative meats, and not just in the US, but all around the world. In 1893, Mary Elizabeth Lees was the first to imagine a world where people would no longer worry about slaving in the kitchen, as we would have food pills which would contain all that was required for a balanced diet. Now, although she might have been wrong by predicting it would happen by 1993, the idea itself is one that will likely come to fruition in the next 30 years. Today, Soylent is the name of a drink which contains lipids, carbs, proteins, essential vitamins and minerals which the body requires. This kind of nutrient pack will most likely be made smaller, solidified and flavored to taste like regular organic food in the future. These food pills will likely be cylindrical and no larger than a regular capsule. Now given that the body requires around 2000 calories a day, a person would need to consume several of these pills to gain the necessary amount of nutrients and carbs. But of course, the question arises, why bother with this when you can have real organic food that hasn't been overly processed? Hunger and waste are two of the biggest problems in the world today, and it's bound to get worse. Simply put, the world's population is set to reach 9 billion in just 30 years, and in order to provide enough food for everyone, we will need a type of meal which is cheap non-perishable and easily distributable. Some of us may have heard of the nicotine patch. Invented in 1984, it is a form of transdermal medication which is used to wean smokers off cigarettes. This method of transdermal infusion can also be applied for nutrients and possibly carbs in regular people. As far back as 2004, the US military has been working on a nutrient patch formerly known as a transdermal nutrient delivery system. Although the project is designed to cater for future combat situations in which substantial amount of time will be spent encapsulated in protective clothes or vehicles with limited access to normal meals, it could easily be applied for civilian purposes where perhaps an athlete might want to make sure he or she is taking a specific quantity of micronutrients or for patients who don't want to use intravenous infusion. Now that we've considered a few ways in which the food we eat could possibly change, we will look at the future ways in which this food could be made. Today, industrial-scale agriculture dominates our food system, but this method of producing food is inherently unsustainable. Firstly, there is the problem of overproduction, which leads to waste. Secondly, industrial farms are often large, centralized affairs, meaning distributing their products, especially when dealing with unprocessed, perishable items, becomes a serious factor. This is why our future will likely see the emergence of urban micro farms. Basically, these will be small automated farms located within cities which grow everything from vegetables to catfish. These farms are already popping up today in the form of indoor vertical farms and rooftop gardens which offer alternative means of accessing local produce, 
but in the future, hundreds of these micro farms could be available in every city. Compared to traditional means of mechanized farming, these micro farms offer several advantages. It provides a source of income for urban dwellers who are interested in agriculture but do not want to leave their respective cities. According to a recent study, urban farming can help solve a host of urban environmental problems like increasing vegetation cover, improving the livability of cities, and providing enhanced food security to more than half of Earth's population who now reside in cities. Future versions of these urban farms will also serve as labs, allowing farmers to genetically modify crops for a host of different reasons, like making them more agreeable to the standard mix of nutrients in that specific farm, or making them mature at a faster rate. Bottom line is, there is no doubt these urban farms are here to stay, and will certainly play a large role in not just how we make our food, but also how our cities are built in the future.